God morning, God morning, Instagram, God morning, Facebook, God morning, world, God morning to all of you out there celebrating this day, this beautiful Sunday, Memorial Day weekend. Today we come to honor our war dead. This is not about picnics. This is not about fanfare. This is not about alcohol. This is not about gathering. It's about honoring those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice with their lives just like many of them in the bible i'm reading about sacrifice with their lives they refused to bend from what their beliefs were what they knew what they know and they know that they know that they know that the word is going to come true so happy Sunday, everybody. What a beautiful day here in Matthews, Virginia. We're at a wedding last night celebrating two people becoming one. All the, the music was going on and the singing. We ended it, Kathy and I ended it with God bless the USA. Good morning, Richard. God morning, brother. God bless the USA. Whenever you guys see me do karaoke on the stage doing something, I will always honor it with the last song with that flag behind me. That flag upon me right here. Those that have fought for our freedoms. As I was reading something this week talking about the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier on Jeopardy. There was three contestants on Jeopardy as you know. Not one of them got. How many steps are they supposed to take when they're guarding the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier? If you don't know what the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is, it's in the... The, the, the cemetery up in Washington, D.C., that myself, Kathy, and my good friend Ben Benita got to go up there and honor and witness it a couple years ago. We were laying wreaths at the foot of every tomb in Arlington National Cemetery. Man, you can feel the spirit in there. And all of a sudden, we heard the, the guys over here were doing the, the marching back and forth, guarding the tomb. Let's, let's go check that out. God morning, Julio. And we went over there. Every time they went over there, they took so many steps. They would click their heels. They'd turn around and go back, click their heels. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day. And there's a, I'm going to read here in a minute about exactly what it takes to get on that duty. No alcohol. Certain size, certain weight. And what really struck me was I was reading about the story from Jeopardy, and I looked it up online and got more depth into it, was that these men said during the hurricane, as the Congress went home, as the senators went home, as the president went home of our country, those soldiers that are guarding the tomb said, I will serve, Lord. I will serve the men that fought for this country and died for my freedom. They didn't care about the hurricane. They didn't care about the winds. And I can promise you they were the only one out there guarding the tomb of those unknown war dead. Some of them may have been your uncles and grandfathers, aunts, fathers. They said, I'm going to honor the men and women that fought for this country and died for my freedom. You can all go home. I will guard the tomb. God morning, Daniel. That's what it takes. Commitment. To what is right and just. You have to be committed. To something bigger than you. This is where we miss the mark as humans. We don't understand the commitment. That people made before us goes back to talking about the Civil War. Then we're going to read here in a minute. So it talks about before Christ and how they were honoring the war that even back then before they even called it Memorial Day. So thank you to all the veterans that are currently serving, have served, and will serve, as my answer machine says at my home. I don't take my duty lightly. Honor, duty, humanity, country. It's what God showed me on the drive down here this morning. He always gives me a word to share with you. Honor, duty, humanity, country. We have to honor one another. We have to honor Daniel. We have to honor 
Julio. We have to honor Richard. We have to honor Darwin. Good morning. Welcome, Instagram. These calls have been going deep. Hundreds of people have been viewing these calls. We haven't even launched this to the public yet. We're getting ready to sell our house. You better believe I'm taking some of those finances and, and sending this message out across the world. Because God told me this morning, humanity. It's not about the United States. As you can see, we're in a full-fledged, all-out spiritual warfare right now. And if we don't get our act together, there's going to be a lot of prices to be paid way higher than what the war debt have paid. You're going to see suffering and all kinds of misery. People coming against each other if we don't get our acts together. And that's why I want to talk about the second thing today. Become a hope dealer. Is what one of the sisters on our prayer call said this week. In the Power Hour Divine Ministries. A PhD. Just like PhD over here on my left hand side on Instagram. And PhD Daniel Sanchez. PhD. Power our divine ministries, serving humanity, serving the greater good. It's way bigger than you think you are. It's over your head, it's over my head. What we're serving here is way bigger than what we can see. And that's the message I want to bring to you today. Become a hope dealer. Deal somebody some hope. Because there's some people right now, they're on their last legs. They are like, man... I'm watching the TV. I'm watching what's going on over here. I see people coming against each other. I see people dying. Drink your water. With lemon as I'm choking on my coconut bar I was eating this morning. Hope dealers. Hope dealers. Become a hope dealer. Deal somebody some hope so they can get out of their situation. Got morning time. But some people out there right now, they're on their last leg. And I've heard some testimonies this week. Dude was like, this is it. I'm out. I can't take this no more. He went into the, the McDonald's to take his own life. And some guy got the Holy Spirit. As we're studying the book of Acts right now, the Holy Spirit came upon this guy. came over and said, hey, hey, brother, I'm not sure what you're going through, but I wanted to buy you a coffee and something to eat. At that moment, the dude shifted. He says, you know what? I'm not going to take my own life tomorrow. That's what I've been telling myself for six months now. Joe, you want a drink? I'll do it tomorrow. It's called reverse procrastination. If you want something, just tell your mind, I'll do it tomorrow. And guess what? And tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. But most of the time, that urge is going to go away. You're not going to want that. As I was taking out my brother Vern this week, and he, he 16 days sober. People told me when I first met this guy five weeks ago on the side of a road with no food and no water in his refrigerator. I said, you'll never get him sober. I said, that's not up to me. I'm here to be a hope dealer for that man. In 16 days now, sober. For 50 years, this man drank alcohol. 16 years old, and that's not me, that's not Christy, that's him and the Holy Spirit, he's got a one-on-one -on -one conversation going, I can guarantee it, took him out fishing the other night, hope dealer, this is what we're called to do, but he kept asking me, how about that whiskey, I need some whiskey, need some whiskey. I said, you ask me one more time that you want some whiskey, I'm taking you home, and guess what, Todd? Guess what, Daniel? Guess what, Richard? Guess what, Julio? He stopped asking me because he knows I was serious. I will take you home. Don't bother me with your BS about what you want. I'm coming to give you what you need. And every one of you out there right now needs a little bit more hope. And that's the one thing they left out of Pandora's box. Here's the good news for you. They tried to put all these things away. They tried to burn all the Bibles, get rid of all the good news, put it all away. Shh. Burning. Garbage. Burying. They can't get rid of it. Because he paid the ultimate sacrifice for you, for me, for us. We don't have to do it no more. 
He paid the price. The veterans paid the price for our freedoms. Christ Jesus paid the price for our sins. What are you worried about? Stop listening to man. Listen to the hope dealer. Is what we've been doing this week. And the messages, the restorations, even the pastor was being corrected this week in our hope dealing session. Power our divine ministry, the PhD. What are you dealing? Not pharmaceuticals, not marijuana, not Percocets, not cocaine. Those things are just going to numb the pain. They're not going to heal your pain. Y'all need some hope. So we come to bring you some hope this week. This Memorial Day weekend as we honor and salute our war dead. As I hear Lou Russo in my ear right now, his brother died in the first wave of Normandy at 17 years old, fighting for your freedom, fighting for my freedom. How dare we take advantage of those people and complain about our situation. Somebody else I know got their toe cut off this week. People getting legs cut off, arms cut off, hands cut off. But guess what? You're still here. God morning, Tammy. Some of those men and women, you don't want to know what they went through in Vietnam and World War I and World War II. Dropping Agent Orange on them and the sicknesses. I can hear Mr. Riley in my ear right now, my 8th grade teacher, fighting in the Marines, getting Agent Orange dropped on top of him. We have no excuses to not get up and go do it again. To honor the war dead. To honor Christ Jesus as he pushed himself off of those spikes just so he can breathe for four hours for you and for me. And if they would have broke his legs, he wouldn't be able to push himself off. The other two legs were broken. Richard knows this. Timmy knows this. And once they break the legs... You die because then all of a sudden you're just hanging by your arms and you can't breathe. Talk about suffering. That's suffering. But the Bible told us there will not be one broken bone. And that was before they crucified Christ. Look it up for yourself. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Power Hour Divine Ministries. But what I can say without a shadow of a doubt was I speak to a woman yesterday. Come to this event. Come to this live event. Renew a right spirit within me, O Lord, is the theme of that event. I was sharing with a woman yesterday at one of the the cells that I stopped by. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit started preaching and teaching. I I shared this with her. We'll be there. I shared with her some of the people that are going to be speaking from that stage and some of their stories. It's going to blow your mind. Get there on June 29th. Listen to these testimonies. Feel what I'm feeling. See what I'm seeing. Hear the testimonies of the families that are being restored from the hope dealers. Call themselves the Church of the Rejects. They're rejected by society, rejected by the church, rejected by their families, kicked out of their houses, abandoned in a laundromat. I don't know where you were abandoned, how you were rejected, how you were traumatized, how you were wounded. But I have hope for you. You can renew your spirit on June 29th. I'm not going to make any promises. I can promise you the spirit's going to show up. That's what I can promise you. Just like Vernon, you have to do the healing. It's not up to me to do it. We are the container to create the space for the Spirit to show up, for Christ to heal you. We can't do that. Your faith will. Your faith will. You can heal you. Because most of you have made yourself sick based upon your thoughts, based upon your feelings, based upon the words you speak to yourselves, based upon what you listen to from what people spoke over you. And they were hurt. They were hurting you because they were hurting and then they felt better. Now everybody's hurting. Guess what? There was no hope dealer there. And we took it on as truth. So this week's episode 
of the hour of power. <laughs> they tell you the power hour ministries and the rises one kingdom. They're in alignment with each other. The rises one kingdom podcast this week. Memorial Day. Hope dealer. I want you to take that way with you today. Honor those that have paid the price with their life. With those soldiers walking back and forth. How many steps? Not one of the contestants got it right. Because they're so confined to the ways of this world. They're not thinking about the men and women that paid the price. They're not thinking of the people that show up every day to serve humanity. They're thinking about their pocketbooks. They're thinking about themselves. That's why we're in the situation we're in right now. Their spirit is coming against them. And everybody is feeling the pain. You see it around you. The youth. They don't know what they're coming or going. They don't know what sex they are. They're killing themselves like crazy. Number one cause of death right now. 35 and under. Suicide. Number one death. Not cancer. Not drugs. Not overdoses. Think about that. If you're a leader right now. And you're hearing this message. It's time to lead. We require some real leaders that come from a place of hope dealing, serving humanity, honor, duty, humanity, country. Because we are the greatest country still in the world, the United States of America. But we got a lot of work to do as a unit, as one, one kingdom. It's not your kingdom. It's not my kingdom. It's not their kingdom. It's our kingdom. It's his kingdom, reality. His kingdom, and we're just here borrowing it. The Bible talks about that kingdom come. So keep drinking your lemon water. Keep moving right. Keep thinking right. Let's get into the content here. We're getting to our Power Hour ministry call coming up here shortly. Check this out. What is Memorial Day weekend? The last Monday of every May every year, so it falls on different dates. Memorial Day was inaugurated in the early 1860s officially, but in 431 B.C., soldiers killed in the Fallopian War were honored with a public funeral and speech given by the Greek statements, Pericle. So it goes all the way back to before Christ, 431 B.C. Officially, 1860s. But now it's in 1971, it became a national holiday. Why did it take so long? Because everybody's worried about themselves. As I was saying on Jeopardy, that the three people asked the questions. He said, the guard must, during their walk across the tomb of the unknown soldier, how many steps? And none of them knew it. So here's the details about the tomb of the unknown soldiers. It's 21 steps. It alludes to the 21-gun salute, which was what they do at every single military funeral to honor those that have paid the price. And we just did this a week ago here in Matthews County honoring the police officers and the sheriffs that have passed away in the line of duty last year. Our sheriff's department did that here to honor all those that liked it. And they had the scrolling of the pictures, the faces, The canines that were killed in the line of duty. And then the post-83, the American Legion, which I belong to, went outside with a 21-gun salute honoring those that have passed away in the line of duty serving. This is a really an awesome sight to watch if you have never got a chance to watch it. Kathy, I, and I said, Ben, we got to witness this. And it was actually raining the day that we were there. Rain, sleet, snow, hurricanes. These guys show up every single day, 24-7. Here's more details about it. <clears throat> How long do they hesitate after they're about face? Because they go back and forth before they return their walk. And why? It's 21 seconds, the same as the 21-gun salute. The same reason as in answer number one. Why are their gloves wet? So they wet their gloves. There's another one of the questions they were asking. Their gloves are moistened to prevent them losing the grip on the rifle. Do they carry their rifle on the same shoulder all the time? And if not, why? They carry the rifle on the shoulder away from the tomb 
after their march across the path, they execute an about face, move the rifle to the other side of the shoulder. How often do they change the guard? Because if it's 24-7, that's got to be pretty tiresome walking back and forth, back and forth, 21 steps, back and forth, pause 21 seconds, walk 21 steps, pause 1 to 21 seconds, 21 steps, pause 21 seconds. Can you imagine how long do they do this per person? Guards are changed every 30 minutes, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. That's my commitment to showing up in life. If I've been granted one more day in this life, if you've been granted one more day in this life, how come you're not showing up? These guys are showing up at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Every 30 minutes, they change. How many steps do they take back and forth in one day? The discipline, the commitment. For a person to apply for this guard duty at the tomb, they must be between 5'10 and 6'2. Their waist size cannot exceed 30 inches. They must commit the two years of their life to guard the tomb. Two years. Marching back and forth. In the hurricane. So when they sign up, when I signed up, that commitment didn't end when we signed up. It ends when you die from the flesh. They also live in a barracks under the tomb. Under the tomb of the unknown soldiers. And they cannot drink any alcohol on or off duty, so they're in the right spirit. That's why they call alcohol spirits, because it changes your state. They want them in a hope dealer state, not in an alcohol-induced state. They cannot swear in public. They cannot disgrace the uniform or the tomb in any way. After two years, the guard is given a wreath pin that is worn on the lapel, signifying they served as a guard of the tomb. Man, my body's vibrating. There are only a little over 600 presently worn that have had the honor of guarding the tomb. What an honor. The guard must obey these rules while serving as guards as for the rest of their lives if they choose. They must obey these rules while serving as guards or for the rest of their lives if they say choose. I can guarantee you that most of them honor those rules the rest of their life. That's commitment. Again, what are you committed to? Your excuses? Or are you going to show up in this life? The shoes are specifically made with a very thick sole to keep the heat and the cold from their feet. There are metal heel plates that extend to the top of the shoe in order to make the loud click as they come to a halt. Every time they come to a stop, click. Click, God, more than Darren. Click. You can hear them click their heels. I'm like, I was talking to Kathy when we were there watching this. I'm like, that's pretty cool. How are they clicking those heels? It's because they have the, the metal on their shoes. There are no wrinkles, no folds, or lint on the uniform. And this is the precision it takes to execute at a high level. I remember when I was in the military, they used to have these barrack inspections. They had all these crazy rules about how they had to come in and inspect. And they would go underneath the outside garment to check the buttons on the pants that were hanging inside of that. To see, they were buttoned. Guess what? I figured it out. Because I've been telling you, I'm not the sharpest tool in the, t in the shed. But when I figure it out, I'm going to figure it out. And guess what? Soldier of the month. Once I figured it out. Then the first sergeant said, Joe, why don't you go out? Uh, for the soldier of the quarter. Yeah, I'll do that for sergeant. Soldier of the quarter won that. Attention to detail, showing up. You don't have to show up at, at this high level. That's not in your capacity. But if you're chosen to show up every day, I would suggest you show up every day because I know somebody that did. I know guys that have 
showed up every day until they died on the battlefield. Private Doss saved 75 men from Hacksaw Ridge in World War II without a weapon and wounded by himself. And he just kept saying, Lord, just one more. Lord, one more. Lord, one more. Let me just save one more. And he lowered him by rope off of Hacksaw Ridge. 75 men wounded. And he refused to carry a weapon because his Bible is the same as my Bible that said, Thou shalt not kill. And they made fun of him in boot camp. They made fun of him while he was in the barracks. They raised him and they chastised him until that night he saved 75 men from death. After that, Sergeant, we're not going back up there until Private Doss prays for us. They became believers based upon his belief. All off-duty time, back to our studies, all off time is spent studying the 175 notable people, 175 notable people laid to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. A guard must memorize who they are and where they are, and where they are interred, where they're buried. This is what the guards do for two years, living under their tombs. 30 minutes back and forth, 21 steps, pausing 21 seconds, honoring those that have served for our freedoms. And they don't even know their names. Among the notables that are there, President Taft, Joe Lewis, the boxer, and Medal of Honor winner, Audie Murphy, the most decorated soldier of World War II. Every guard spends five hours a day getting their uniforms ready for guard duty. Imagine that. What can you do in five hours? They spend five hours getting their uniform ready to honor the men who have fought for this country, for that flag. I posted that video this week. In baseball game, we're not going to do the national anthem today. And the whole crowd was like, oh, oh, what do you mean? They just started singing it. And all of a sudden, you see the, the ball players from the USA run back onto the field. Because both teams went back to the dugouts when they said they're not going to do the national anthem. And the audience, the people in attendance, the spectators, not in the arena, started singing. And they ran back on the field. And the whole place was singing the national anthem. Finally, eternal rest grant them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. What an honor it is to honor the war dead. As I said, the U.S. Senate took two days off in anticipation of Hurricane Isabel. ABC Evening News, it was reported that because of the dangers of the hurricane, the military members assigned to the duty of guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier, were given the permission to suspend their assignment. They respectfully declined the offer. No way, sir! Is what their response was. Because when you commit to something, when you have faith that goes beyond your understanding, you will die serving. This is what they decided they were going to do. To honor the people that were dead. And they couldn't even know who their names were. Because their bodies were in so many pieces. But they said, no way, sir. We're going to serve those that have served us. As long as I have life in my body, I will serve them. Soaked to the skin, marching in the pelting rain of a tropical storm. They said that guarding the tomb was just not an assignment. It was the highest honor that can be afforded to a service person. So you servant leaders, I call upon you this morning, this Memorial Day weekend of 2024. Are you going to put the uniform on to serve? Are you going to prepare for five hours to make sure you're ready? 
to serve. Because the duty, the honor for humanity and country is calling you right now. Not tomorrow, right now. The tomb has been patrolled continuously 24 7 since 1930. God bless and keep them. Thank you, Lord. Duty, honor, country, and God we trust. Was the final words for those soldiers, servicemen, and women guarding the tomb certain height certain waist size to your commitment this is what it takes to become a humble servant leader topic number two I was going through my meditation this week and what was coming through was it was, the Holy Spirit was convicting me to appreciate how far you've come. Look at where you were. Look at where what you've gone through. Look at where you are. Appreciate how far you've come. And more importantly, Tammy, appreciate the multiple versions that you have gone through, Julio. That you've gone through, Daniel. That you've gone through, Todd. Appreciate those versions of you. Don't make them wrong. Some people aren't going to understand you. But he showed me this. Multiple versions. Appreciate where and who you are and how far you've come. Because guess what? If you're watching this message, you're, you're still here. There's time to make amends. Some people make it on their deathbed. I don't care when you make it. I'm not concerned about when you're going to make those amends. I say make sure you do it sooner than later because sometimes you might not get that opportunity. Sometimes you're not going to wake up. Many people today, this Sunday morning, didn't wake up. They say, I'll do it tomorrow. Joseph, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll make those amends. I'll make that phone call. I'll repent. I'll ask for forgiveness. Don't let this be you. As I look back at my walk in the different versions, as we seek our higher self, people may not understand you or it, but that's none of your business. As I've said here many weeks, the last past couple weeks, the good opinion of others is none of your business. You are to be obedient to that guiding spirit in you, which Jesus left here, and it's called the Holy Spirit, to renew a new spirit within me, Oh Lord, I would suggest you coming to this renewal service on live event on June 29th of 2024. Fly into Richmond, drive down here, get into that room to renew your spirit, to appreciate where you were, appreciate more importantly, where are you going and who are you going to become? Because we're being called to serve humanity. You see it. I see it. I see the people hurt. God laid that on my heart back in November of last year. I brought it up to the PhD ministries. Amen. Doing a live event. I'm being called to do this. Two of my tenants wanted to commit suicide. Young people. 35 and under. One of them had three children. Eight and below. He said, man, they would have took their lives in my house. How am I going to live with myself? But I didn't ask them and show them a way out to be a hope dealer, to renew their spirit, a right spirit. So yes, sir. Obedience is better than sacrifice, the Bible says. I said, I'll be obedient. I'll put, I'll put on this live event. I'll invite my brothers and sisters. I'm not sure who's coming. But if you're telling me to do this, I'm going to do it. That's my commitment. That's my 21 steps. 
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. That is Romans 15, 13. That you may abound in hope. Look it up. Romans 15, 13. Corinthians 6, 19. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to you guys here that talk about the Holy Spirit and how you are to be led by that higher self, by that higher spirit, by that renewed spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Even Jesus said, I'm going to leave you a helpmate called the Holy Spirit to assist you. There's some powerful passages here. Pay attention. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from the Father? You are not your own. You are not your own. You are His. Is what I'm reading that scripture. That's why a lot of us parents, we take our kids off the altar when we can't deal with them anymore. Here, God, you deal with them. I, I'm at my wit's end. You deal with them. And we take him back off the altar right before God's getting ready to minister to him. The ultimate doctor is going to heal them. We pull them back under our own understanding. Acts 1.8 But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, meaning all of humanity. Is what he was showing me on the drive down this morning. But you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and all the ends of the earth. Acts 1.8. That's powerful. Listen, write these down. Go back and watch this again. Acts 2.38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ Christ. For the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But are you willing? Are you a willing vessel to allow Him to work in you? Or do you keep going back to your old ways? Isaiah 11, 2. And I have one more after this. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on Him. The spirit of wisdom and, under, and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. As I was reading one of my brother's posts this morning, Luke. This is what he was talking about. Read that again. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. And the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, Luke. I didn't like those words before. The fear of the Lord. I said, I'm going to fear the Lord. He loves us. Why do I have to fear him? <clears throat> and then we got the understanding on week six about reverence. It's the highest respect you can pay, similar to the tomb of the unknown soldier. The highest honor to serve the tomb. The highest thing you can do to God. Fear. His power and His reverence. Fear the Lord, it says in the Bible. Not afraid. Honor. Duty. Humanity. And my favorite, John 14, 26. The last one. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, this is Jesus speaking, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I had said to you. Everything that he has said to you. That's why there's 66 books that make up the Holy Bible. 1,500. That's why. Over all these years. 1,500. 40 different authors. To write that book. 
how did they remember what Jesus told them? A lot of people ask that question. I was asking that question. How do they remember? The Holy Spirit. Right there in John 14, 26. But the advocate, those that are fighting for you, is what an advocate is. They fight for you. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in Jesus' name, will teach you all things. Will teach you all things, Tammy. And you will re will remind you of everything. He will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. This is how we remember. When we get convicted by the hope dealer, the Holy Spirit. This is how you're going to remember. Because I hear a lot of you saying right now, I don't have a good memory. I can never do that. We just went to a play recently. This one guy did like almost every single scene. We're like, how did he remember? I could never do that. See how we tell ourselves this? When the hope dealer shows up, called the Holy Spirit, you will remember everything that was said. That's how powerful you are once you believe. That's how powerful we are once we believe. The moon and medicine, that's the difference. You can, all you guys here on Instagram, I know it disappears over here, the, the full live. Go to my personal Facebook page, Joseph David Shermer, S-C-H-I-R-M-E-R, this full version there. Take some notes. This is some powerful insights that will change your life. I'm not going to change it for you. I'm just a messenger. I'm the hope dealer this morning. 8.30 on a Sunday morning. I was tired this morning. Built a storage shed on our property in a day and a half. Roofing, siding, framing from scratch. There's nothing but a pile of wood there. Built it from scratch. 8 by 16. Just so I can park. Or because we have to move out of our house. I need, I need a place to park my 50 inch lawnmower. A lot of grass down here to mow. The house we live in now is like six and a half, seven hours to mow the grass. I don't know about you. I ain't got that kind of time. But that place needed some place to stay. And it's not going to be in my garage. So, hey, got to build a shed. All right, build a shed. 12 hours one day and four and a half hours the next day it was done. My body's feeling it. I didn't want to get up this morning. I went for a massage yesterday. What are you doing to feed your body? What are you doing to feed your spirit? How are you overcoming the ways of the world? Because if you're paying attention to what the man is telling you, you're going to struggle. You will lose your house. Some of you will lose your wife. Some of you are going to lose your husband. Some of you are going to lose your kids. Some of you are going to lose everything. And that's when we fully surrender. And say, God, I can't do this no more. Help me. Send the helpmate. Send me the hope dealer in the form of the Holy Spirit, which will help you remember all things. How good is our God? He's going to send you a helper, an advocate to fight for you. We are lucky. We don't have to sin no more. Because Yeshua did it for us. Victory. He's the only one that I know of that died. And three days later, people witnessed him rise and come back to life. Holes in his hands. The holes in his side from Doubting Thomas. Read the Bible. It'll tell you all these stories. Powerful insights this Sunday morning from Memorial Day. From the tomb of the old known soldier. From the Holy Spirit to renew a spirit in me. Oh Lord, come to our live event we're hosting down here in Virginia, Milson. You can drive down here. Everything that you've been fighting. The demons some of you have been fighting. Some of the spirits that you've been fighting will be renewed if you choose I'm not going to do it for you I tried to do that for years a Milson knows me I used to work with a Milson and Pitney Bowes for years show up get the work done I can't do it for you I tried to build those crosses I tried to carry your crosses 
form of money, assistance, wisdom. They call them ask holes. People that ask you for something, then they do the opposite. God, how do I do all this? They ask me, they ask God. Then they get the word from the Holy Spirit. They get the word from me and they do the exact opposite. So they ask you and they do the exact opposite. I saw that post probably about 10 years ago came up. That's what they're called. Ask holes. Not the swear word for you kids out there. If you're asking, ask with an open mind is my recommendation today. Ask for the assistance. Ask for the help that you're requiring right now because you're not broken. We're all just learning. <clears throat> so finally, we require to clean out our pipelines of the mind, body, and spirit. How do we do this? Most of the symptoms that we being treated right now are just that the symptoms we have to get to the root of this of the pain and the suffering and the challenges that we're going through and get those drains unclogged from many years of backed up sewage in our pipes in our ministry led by apostle miguel and angel sanchez this week and then i started thinking about miguel angel sanchez was that name given by the holy spirit there's a man that was running from his calling for 30 years. I met him back in 2016. I saw his gift on day one. I knew he had a big calling on his life. And then he still ran until two years ago. So from 16 to 22, for six years he ran, plus the other 20 some odd years before that. And now he can honestly say, now I can honestly say with him, he is here to fight for the greater good as a humble servant leader, as an apostle. And here's the weird thing is that he was told this at 19 years old. And it scared him. He grew up without a father. His father died of alcohol at four years old. When he was four years old. Never knew his father really. So all along he was searching for his father and when the Apostle Emil told him you're going to speak to business people or Apostle Amanda you're going to speak to business people all over the world and in Miguel's mind limited to mind he says I'm 19 years old I don't speak the language this guy is crazy but you're scaring me let me run for 30 years and now he's showing up. He's unclogging his pipes. Call out the rotor rooter. They put the thing down the pipes. And then water starts to flow. Now the spirit is starting to flow. Where in your life do you need to clean yourself out? To allow the spirit to flow through you. In you. As you. He's in you. The Bible tells us. He was put in you to help you remember all things. So today, I invite you to welcome in the hope dealer into your life. He will change your life. He will show you the things that you didn't see. But if you don't unpack your hurt and your trauma and your backpack and all the things from the past... God mourn it all. If you don't unpack those things, you have no hope. Because the trauma and the torment of your past is Raul knows for 38 years for me. So dating with alcohol, to being here today six months, no alcohol. Why? The Holy Spirit told me last year, no alcohol in 2024. I know he had a reason. It was way beyond what I can see. I'm just going to believe. I'm going to believe in the unseen. How crazy is that? When you believe in the unseen, as Raul has been doing for the last 10 years, guiding men to help them remember. 
guiding them to help them remember. This morning I come here to help you remember that you have a hope dealer waiting for you. An advocate that wants to fight for you. To allow you to live your purpose. To allow you to live in peace. To allow you to see and remember what you didn't think you could remember. But as he said right there, unclog the pipes of your past so you can see. So you can see what they don't see. So you can see and they can see. Now we can see the truth. And the truth is, we all have a hope dealer inside of us. So this Memorial Day weekend, as we honor those that guard the tomb of the unknown soldier, as we honor those that have served this country, that paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms, 63 out of the last 66 weeks I've been here, serving, nothing to upsell you, selling you hope, to remember all things. Because as he says right here in my favorite scripture about the Holy Spirit in John 14, 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom our Father has sent in Jesus' name will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said to you. That's all you need. That's all you require is the hope dealer to help you remember who you are. I say go out there and fight with everything you got for what you believe. And whether you're first or you're last, you will get the same reward. My intention, my prayer for you this morning as we end the Rises One Kingdom podcast, episode 24. Allow the hope dealer into your life. Let him guide you. Because left to our understanding, our own understanding got us where? Got us in a lot of pain and misery. That was me. I remember that guy. He was in a lot of pain. But he was good at masking it. As Brother Raul tells us. Through that experience. And through that experience, I found the hope dealer. And through that experience, I was called to lead the Kingsman Redeemer. Come into a town near you. I will not stop until they put me in the ground. I can promise you. I will not give up until my last breath. If I have to push off of those nails like Jesus did just to breathe, that's what I will be doing. So we come to serve honor, duty, humanity, country. Those four things, the four pillars of life. So I love you all. I appreciate you. Take some notes from some of these things that you heard today. Allow the hope deal to work in your life. Go out there and salute every single veteran that you see this weekend. Honor them. Honor the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Now we learned about the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. 21 steps, 21 second pause, 21 gun salute. Why? To honor those who have paid the price. Christ Jesus. And over here on my other side, with the American flag, all those that have fought for the greatest country in the world today as we still have hope in a hope dealer called the Holy Spirit. And remember, join us at this live event here in Matthews, Virginia on June 29th to renew a new spirit in me, O oh Lord. I love you all. I appreciate you. Keep showing up. They have not seen nothing yet. When it's all said and done, together we will rise as one kingdom under Father God, Christ Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate. I love you all. Have a great day.